Good morning everyone. This is one of the last parts of the lessons that we're going to tackle under the understanding the self under the subject or professorship of Dr. Dolores C. Cabral and we're going to tackle about the chemistry of love, the science behind lust, attraction, and companionship. It is prepared together with my groupmate, Noriel D. Pastor. But before we dive into the uh, lessons, we're going to uh, first read the targets or the learning of outcomes and objectives. And at the end of the discussion, the learners should be able to first define what is love under the cognitive domain, determine the stages of love, the psychomotor domain, and third, value the importance of the different love hormones by writing a reflective essay. I don't know if you're going to do the reflective essay because we're out of time, but just please bear on the uh, lessons that we're going to tackle because this is one of the uh, highlights of the uh, psychomotor, the brain impulses, and other hormo hormones that it is present between uh, the relationship of a man to man, a girl to girl, or a woman to a man. So, what is love? As you can see on these slides, we have three different or a lot, a lot of kind of loves. We have, of course, the heterosexual, the homosexual, and it is kind of a debate whether love is transcendental or love no no boundaries of course we all know that love knows no boundaries so according to the three stages of love according to helen fisher an anthropology or anthropologer anthropologist rather and a professor there are three stages of falling in love in each stage different brain chemicals influence your brain chemistry the neurotransmitters that get you all excited and the hormones that carry the feeling all throughout your body. For example, when we are falling in love, we're not just talking about our brain, our heart, but there is a chemical reaction. The brain chemicals influence our drive, our passion, our attraction, lust, and attachment. So next slide is that there are three stages of love. First, the lust, the attraction, and the attachment. When we talk about lust, L-U-S-T is driven by the desire for sexual gratification, evolutionary basis for this is our need to reproduce. Through reproduction, organisms pass on their genes and thus contribute to the perpetuation of their species. When we talk about lust, these are the sexual intercourse that happen to a man to a woman, a man to man, or a woman to woman. This is because of the term sexual gratification. We need to be satisfied and to be gratified for us to be able to reproduce in that specific sense. Now, let's go to the uh, brain structure of lust. What does it need? What does it encompasses? For example, thus we have the uh, parts of the brain that called hypothalamus or the brain plays a big role by stimulating the production of sexual hormones. These are the testosterone and estrogen. Testosterone is for male and estrogen is for female. And of course, when we talk about the hypothalamus, it is located in our brain. And it is an, a stimulating factor or stimulating driven force that, of course, regenerate or top the sexual hormones that become we are lost or we are, our needs need to be satisfied, per se. Another is that hypothalamus of the brain plays a big role by stimulating the production of the sex hormones. Testosterone from the testes, being male, increases the libido. And estrogen from the ovaries, being female, increases sexual motivation in women during ovulation, the peak of estrogen in the production. When we talk about testosterone, it condoles or it encompasses the male 
sex hormones and when we talk about the libido this is the driven when we want to have a sexual orientation or sexual intercourse while estrogen is for female it located on the ovaries and it increases during the sexual intercourse okay let's go to the attraction okay the first stage of love is the lust second is attraction attraction is falling in love it involves romantic or passionate love characterized by euphoria. Physical symptoms of falling in love includes loss of appetite, inability to sleep, lack of concentration, wet palms, and butterflies in the stomach. It says here that when you are attracted to someone, you can lose your appetite, inability to sleep, hindi ka nakakatulog, lack of concentration, wet palms kapag na... Aglung lung at the imam in uh, vernacular language and butterflies in the stomach. You are being characterized by euphoria. Euphoria means you have this high ecstasy. You are so happy. You are so jubilant because you are attracted to someone. And sometimes it is romantically speaking, no? Okay, attractions can cause brain chemicals or. It sparks chemicals in our brain. These are the monoamines or monoamines or the dopamine, norepinephrine, phenylethylamine, and serotonin. The most famous one is the serotonin and the dopamine, which is it, of course, contributes the uh, attraction towards our counterpart. Diba? So, there are four, of course, we also had tackled this one, the dopamine, the serotonin, the norepinephrine, the phenylthalamine, no? It is one of the contributors or the contributors of the attraction towards men to men and, of course, about love and lust. As I have said a while ago, the attraction condoles or encompasses the brain chemicals called monoamines, the dopamine, the norepinephrine, the phenylthalamine, and the serotonin. No? And when we talk about this, there is what we call Venn diagram when we talk about the, uh, these brain chemicals when we talk about attraction. First is the mood. When you talk about the mood, there is noro or noradrenaline, serotonin, and dopamine. It, of course, encompasses the impulse, sleep, sex, appetite, aggression, pleasure, reward-seeking, drive, energy, vigilance, alertness, and so on and so forth. Thalamine or phenylthalamine is a chemical that is found naturally in the body. It can also be made in laboratory. Penny... Phenethalamine is used for athletic performance, depression, weight loss, and to improve mood and attention. But there is no good scientific evidence no, to support these uses. Of course, phenylthalamine, when we talk about it, it can be laboratory made or it can be uh, present in our body in a natural sense. Last but not the least, the attachment is staying together. The predominant factors in long-term relationship, no, the uh, attachment, we are being attached to someone special, to our families, to our friends, to our loved ones. But attachment, romantically speaking, is a general term. While less attraction are pretty much exclusive to romantic entanglements, when we talk about entanglements, these are tied. They are tied. Attachment mediates friendships, parents, infant bonding, social cordiality, and many other intimacies as well. As I have mentioned a while ago, these are general terms for our romantic relationships, our social relationships, and our personal relationships towards others, no? There are two primary hormones here in attachment, the oxytocin and the vasopressin. When we talk about oxytocin, Often nicknamed as the cuddle hormone, it is produced by hypothalamus and released in large quantities during sexual intercourse or the pics of orgasm, breastfeeding, and childbirth. 
and all of these events are precursors to bonding. When we talk about oxytocin, these are of course present no, in our brain impulses in an, our body. Because as I have mentioned a while ago, these are uh, for attachment purposes. When we you're finished during sexual intercourse, you cuddle because that it needs your needs needs to be satisfied. And vasopressin is often nicknamed as, of course, the uh, water reabsorption, the vasoconstriction. These are the effect of vasopressin, no? How, um, what, uh, a while ago, the ADH, the vasopressin, also known as ADH, it, of course, present in our hypothalamus i have mentioned a while ago that hypothalamus is located in our brain the posterior the posterior pituitary and of course the target of vasopressin is the kidneys vascular is smooth muscles and i have mentioned a while ago also that water absorption and the vasoconstriction there is a table here in our slides that talk about talks about the site of release the hormone the target the effect when we talk about the oxytocin, the uterus is the target, the mammary glands. Of course, when we talk about the mammary glands, these are the dede no, na nagpapa breastfeed ka sa mga bata. These are also oxytocin. Now, I have, we have tackled a while ago the primary purposes or the primary hormones appear in attachment is the oxytocin and the vasopressin. We, has, we have also endorphins are chemicals produced naturally by the nervous system to cope with pain or stress are often called feel-good chemicals because they can act as a pain reliever and happiness booster so that ends our presentation i hope you have learned something and if you have any questions just send us email or via messenger because this is just a brief description or brief discussion about the chemistry of love, the lust, the attachment, the attraction. So thank you very much and have a great day everyone.